hello and welcome to the latest edition of Explore Richland. I'm your host, Mark Ingham. Well, today I thought I was going to relive my youth and visit the beautiful Jeanette Taylor Skate Park here in Richland, Washington. The park is located at 1175 Carondelet Drive, but the easiest way to describe its location is it's near Cadillac Regional Medical Center, behind CUP Church, and near the Hapo Community Credit Union on Williams. Now the park is a community gem and recently received a makeover earlier this year. To talk about that, we are thrilled to welcome Phil Pinar to the program. Phil is the Planning and Capital Projects Manager with the City of Richland. <laughs> Phil, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. All right, oh, you didn't think I could skateboard, did you? I was impressed. I still can't, but anyways. <laughs> well, we are going to talk about the expansion and talk about what's new here at the skate park, but we wanted to start off by talking about giving a brief history lesson on Jeanette Taylor Skate Park for maybe okay. those who don't understand. So can you t take us through like a, f a time frame of what it took to get this skate park here. I can do that. Yeah. So starting back in 2004 is when we started construction. Okay. And I think the planning of it started even two years before that with hiring an architect, having meetings with you know skate park users, going through the design process, permitting process. So the park was completed, the first phase of the park was completed in 2004, which is Mm -hmm. It's pretty much this 19,000 square feet. Wow. And in 2005, we completed phase two, which is the big bowl. And then just last year, completed phase three, um, which is about, I brought it here with me, mm -hmm. 2,300 square feet. Okay. So altogether, we're up over 26,000 square feet of skating area. Wow, that's amazing. And you know, I'm sure a lot of meetings, a lot of a lot of work goes into planning a skate park. Maybe planning a skate park is something that the city isn't too familiar with. Can you talk a little bit about just the process of planning and, and, and how we got to, you know, I mean, the features that we see here today? Well, we are not skate boarders. <laughs> so when, when Dave and I started this process, we relied very heavily on, you know, the skating community and, and even bicycles and scooters weren't mm -hmm. big at that time. So it was, you know, 90% skateboarders who had input into the design of the park. And then we hired an architect who had skateboarding experience out of California mm. and went through a competitive bid process for that, chose him, selected him, and then he developed the final plans. And all through that process, we were having input from you know, future park users on you know, what elements they wanted in the park. Well, Jeanette Taylor was a Richland resident uh, many years ago, moved to Idaho or Montana. Mm -hmm. When she passed away, she left a portion of her estate to the city with the caveat that the money that she left the city be used for a children's park. Wow. So we approached her executor of the estate and the attorney and presented the idea to them to put the money to a skate park, and they loved the idea. So. Mm -hmm. Over time, almost, well, over $400,000 she left in her estate went into building the skate park. Mm. We also had a, a state grant that funded a portion of it. Okay. And I think there were some other miscellaneous funds, but the majority of it uh, came from out-of-city funds. And then the Central United Protestant Church donated the land for the skate park. So almost two acres or three acres of land here. Wow, a lot of players and we're thankful that they all stepped up and were so generous in helping this be built. Very much so. And I'm curious, was building a skate park on the city's radar at all before the Jeanette Taylor um, you know, estate donation? Or was that just the start of the entire process? No, it actually was. Because okay. before the skate park, we had people skating all over the city. And you'd go to city hall meetings and they'd be out on the steps and skating mm -hmm. down the handrails. And so you'd see them, you know, all over the city skating in places that weren't the safest and maybe not set up for that. So it, it was definitely on our radar. The, the donation from the estate of Jeanette Taylor just made it a reality. Well, thanks for that. And earlier this year, the city of Richland added an extension to the skate park. And I guess it was designed to be sort of a beginner, intermediate um, area for kids to enjoy. Talk about planning and the design concept of this expansion. Okay, you're right. This we, We've been told over the years since we built the, the first two phases that mm -hmm. we lacked um, amenities for beginners and intermediate skaters. You know, if you look at the bowls, they're mm -hmm. 10 feet deep. You're dropping in, you know, <laughs> six feet on a fairly vertical transition. So so we worked again with the, the users of the, of the skate park to come up with the elements that we have here. So we have a half pipe four feet high you know a little smoother transition uh, straight rail and the the fun box here so just things that they said it would be nice to have for beginners 
intermediate, and also the experts can use it. You know, mm -hmm. half pipe's always fun. So. Yes, yes, and it's obviously something that the skate park necessarily didn't have before. I mean, there's lots of bowls here, but not a half pipe Correct. feature. So, great, great addition. And you know, I was wondering, how does the skate park fit into the community vision and like the goals of the City of Richland's Parks and Recreation Division? <laughs> Easily, you know, yeah. you, you look at, at how many kids are out here, mm -hmm. and providing them a safe place to skate and a you know kind of a place they call home like any sports association does mm -hmm. uh, fit very clearly and neatly into our vision of providing amenities for all Richland residents and mm -hmm. we lacked that before we had a skate park so yeah great and you know we also added three security cameras here at the skate park which can easily be viewed by on YouTube mm -hmm. why are the cameras needed kind of what activity are we trying to, to eliminate with them well, obviously, you know, looking at the paint on the bowls and other parts of the skate park, we have graffiti issues here. The other thing we wanted to do is just give kids a chance to see, hey, is my friend down at the skate park? And, mm. you know, do I want to join him? You know, maybe that's a little easier than texting. But, it, yeah, security, like I said, we have some graffiti issues uh -huh. and there's some other issues that the, you know, local police department deal with. But it also just gives a chance for kids to see who's here and mm -hmm. if they want to come down and join their friends. So. Yeah. I'm curious, Phil. I mean... I know you're not, ex you know, you're not a skateboarder <laughs> right now, but can, have you researched maybe other skate parks in Washington? Can you kind of rank ours? At, you know, because in my opinion, we have, this is one of the best skate parks I've seen. H have you? Can you say something like that with your knowledge of looking at skate parks? I can tell you, we have a very good skate park. Yeah. There. You know, if you talk to to park users, it's one of the better ones in the state. Mm -hmm. Problem is, they're always making new ones with mm. with different elements that are a little more challenging. Uh, but yes, we have a we have one of the larger ones, and I think one of the more diverse ones. Yeah, perfect. Well, Phil, thanks very much for coming on the program today and talking with us about the Richland Skate Park you bet. with a focus on this new expansion, which opened earlier this year. And we're also excited to talk about an event coming up. The City of Richland's mm -hmm. putting on an event called Grind 18, yep. scheduled for mid-May. Going to have a DJ, we'll have some food, some contests, some giveaways. So you know, a great, a it's great coming event. Coming up pretty soon, uh -huh. and uh, invite everybody out. It's kind of the, you know, grand opening for the mm. new section, but also just give everyone an opportunity to come out and skate the whole park. So. Perfect. And so right now scheduled for mid-May, but, you know, date could be subject to change. So we just encourage you to visit the City of Richland's webpage at the link below, and uh, we'll keep you up to date with when that event is going to happen and other events as well. And, of course, don't forget to follow the City of Richland on our social media platforms. Log on and give us a like on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. We're always sharing tons of great information there. Well, thanks for joining me on this edition of Explore Richland. You know, being at the Jeanette Taylor Skate Park has me feeling like a kid again. So I'm going to see if I can drop in on this. Oh, yeah, here we go. I got something planned for this. Ah, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. At least we're close to Catholic Regional Medical Center.